confirmed cases now at 23,827. Chief Medical Officer Dr Tony Holohan explains why there has been an increase in the number of positive cases today. There has been a reporting of one large number of cases that accumulated over a period of time diagnosed, diagnosed in respect of uh, one specific hospital and reported by the Occupational Health Department of that hospital. New letters have emerged showing tensions between the HSC and the National Public Health Emergency Team. In one of the letters, HSC boss Paul Reid expresses anger that NEFID announced an expansion of coronavirus testing to 100,000 a week without informing the HSC, which carries out the tests. Speaking on the hard shoulder here on News Talk, Labour leader Alan Kelly says it raises concerns. It demonstrates that there was a process in place as regards bringing in a testing regime that was agreed by the HSE, agreed by their board, brought to the Cabinet Subcommittee, and then all of a sudden, uh, NEFID, through the CMO, brought out a figure of 15,000 or 100,000 a week, 15,000 a day. The HSE knew they couldn't deliver this. So from, a, a, I suppose, a governance point of view, this for me is unacceptable. A solicitor representing victims of historical sex abuse in Scouting Ireland say the state might have to consider a redress scheme. A shocking report found a culture of cronyism, credible cases were not reported, while record keeping was chaotic. 356 victims and survivors have so far approached Scouting Ireland with around 275 alleged perpetrators. And the Taoiseach has said it will be months before normal foreign travel is allowed. The Overadker is hopeful restrictions can begin to be eased from next week. The Cabinet will consider the issue tomorrow. But Leo Overadker says we're still some months away from normality when it comes to travelling and visiting friends and family. While these rights may be restricted for a time due to the pandemic and public health emergency, it is our policy to resume normal travel for business leisure, study and visits to friends and relatives as soon as it's safe to do so but not before. This is something the European Commission is currently working on. However, it is going to be months, not weeks, before this is possible. That's it for now. More in an hour. News Talk Weather. Thanks to the AA. For great value van insurance, go online to the AA.ie. Tonight will be dry. A few showers in the northwest will be cold with overnight lows of 0 to 5 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. All right, it's Thursday evenings off the ball. Nathan with you until 10 o'clock. Hope you're all keeping well. Busy show between now and then. John Giles with us in just a few minutes' time, continuing his series of greatest 11s. Tonight, John is going to pick the best 11 rest of the world team of players he's played against. Basically, players that aren't from the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, England, Scotland or Wales that he has played against and he has played against the best. It is a sensational shortlist, so I'm looking forward to hearing his 11 from 7.15. At 8 o'clock, we're going to be joined by Paul Dempsey, a well-known broadcaster who's been front and centre for well, some of the biggest occasions, in particular some of the biggest fights over the last 30 or 40 years. Andy Lee will be with us as well as we pick through some of those. And then on the football show, we're going to check in with some of the Irish players who are... Well, in limbo like everybody else at the moment, we're going to talk to Daryl Horgan, to Alan Judge and Porrig Amund about how they're getting on at their clubs with all three of their seasons uh, destined to be finished up this weekend more than likely and cancelled and they'll have to wait until <coughs> August to restart. So we will check in with them on the football show. The man <coughs> eager to get in there in the background is Richie McCormick, I assume. Stop. Come here to me. I was just looking up... Um, because JP informed me that there's a, a stellar debate being uh, formed around mm. tomorrow's Mount Rushmore and regarding one George Best and whether or not he fits into the County Down or the County Antrim uh, Mount Rushmore. And it's come to the point where I was literally Googling and trying to search for postcodes and seeing which one was relevant to his estate and whether or not there was ones that were specific to Down, ones that were specific to Antrim. This one is going to rumble on and I think it's going to get nasty. Uh, well, it's exactly what we need for a start of a, uh, a, a Thursday evening: the politics of Belfast and Absolutely. the geographical areas. Yeah, let's let's fine. let's run with this one. So, I right. would have assumed that um, George Best was from Antrim. The song literally goes, Georgie, Georgie, they call him the Belfast boy. You go Belfast, aha, mm -hmm. that's in Antrim. But no, on further googling. Uh, it turns out that there's a little bit of a bit of it in the south that uh, tickles into County Down. The consensus seems to be that he's from the east of Belfast, from Craiga Estate, 
yeah. and that Craiga Estate is in County Down. Yes, it is. So George West is obviously going to end up on a Mount Rushmore, either Down or Antrim. If he ends up on Down's Mount Rushmore, it may well be the best Mount Rushmore we have. Go on. Rory McIlroy. So Granted. already, already, we've got two people who, for a period of time, were probably the best in the world at what they do. Absolutely. Yeah, I go along with that. You going along with that? Like yeah. we're, we're not even getting into the GEA side of it. The Mickey Lindens, the James McCartans, Richard Dunwoody, Eddie Irvine. Oh my! Yeah, you're not kidding. That's a hell of a Mount Rushmore. Kieran McGeehan. This puts everybody else in the happy place, this, doesn't it? This is the point. I think we were all sort of thinking Cork was good, Mayo yeah. was exceptional, and Dublin really. maybe right up there. Nah, me was be the a, best so far. Like the, it was going to be a very, very difficult one when it got to Dublin. But this could be the most star-studded because we've had lots of greats across all sports in all counties. But to have the very best in the world and have two of them from the same county may just sway it. Pat I'm, Jennings? I'm they, Pat Jennings? Jesus, how can you have a thing, uh, Mel Rushmore without Jennings if he qualifies? Pete McGrath? Man play. Wow. It's, this is unbelievable stuff. McGrath's definitely worth so, the show. So as say well. best is in. Like if you go best, McElroy, yeah. yeah, Mickey Linden. Then you're going between. I'm very, I'm very uncomfortable leaving Eddie Irvine off. Eddie Irvine, the, Pat Jennings. Je Jennings played in two World Cups. I don't think that's and, and for Northern Ireland, like that doesn't happen. George Best never. Like, well, you don't I, need to point I, out Northern Ireland. Like it's down, Richie. Like thing, you know. But like you know, Pat Jennings was also in. John Giles, all-time Tottenham 11, and was yeah. very close to being in his all-time Arsenal 11. This, hurt, this, this hurts. So this is tomorrow morning. Um, we who's, still who's need to decide. Stops, How do we decide? This. Who is the expert on the geography of Belfast who's impartial and can give us the exact correct answer as to where, John, where George Best should sit? Get Tommy Gorman on the phone. <laughs> He's still Northern Cars. Get Tommy, get Tommy Corman on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Quickly. Quickly. Leave it. Would you go back? <clears throat> uh, Connor Deegan and Donal O'Neill will be making the decision. And Colin Murray is going to. Colin Murray. As well. That was a generic <laughs> Nordy accent there. But no, no, it wasn't. Colin Murray is very much like this, Nathan. He's looking no, forward it's a bit too deep, to, I this, would say. to the snooker. His voice I've is got... a bit lighter. Not, one of your, not your finest work. It's the it's the microphone. You can't. It's the um, if I was in the studio, it'd sound better. Well, well, you're not going to be for a while, Richie. So you know, work on it. Wow. Five three one zero six is the text number. If somehow you have the definitive answer. Uh, do let us know. What you got for us? Uh, the British government says it's opening the door for football to return next month. Talks were held with the FA, Premier League and EFL earlier today. English Culture Secretary Oliver Dowden says the return of top flight football should also mean making it more accessible to view on television for fans and ensuring money trickles down to lower divisions. June 12th is the expected date for a Premier League return. While Tottenham boss Jose Mourinho has denied newspaper reports that he wants the Premier League resumption delayed, some outlets claimed Mourinho was demanding a month with his players before the first fixture. In he's already had about two months with them, if we were to believe what we read in the papers. Well, he's, he's out in the parks of Barnet, uh, working with Tongi and Dombele. But in mm. a statement, Mourinho says he was desperate for the Premier League to resume, so desperate he's, of course, going out into the parks, and extremely proud of how his squad had stayed fit in lockdown, mostly under his purview. Meanwhile, former Liverpool boss Kenny Daglish has backed the playing of the remaining 92 matches at neutral venues. And I thought the, the neutral ground would have been a good idea because you could have stayed, you could have been away for, for three weeks or something and finished the games off. They just played in three or four different grounds. And obviously if it was a, if it was a Premier League club whose ground you were using and they played there, then they would have had an advantage. But I think a neutral venue, I can't see a problem with a neutral venue. I don't know who that benefits or destroys. I mean, if you look at the the table and the ones that have been quite vociferous in their complaints, they've only won four or five games in the season anyway. So, uh, what, nine at home or something, or 14 or 15 at home? They've, they've, no, they've no won that many. So I, I can't see, whatever they play, it's going to be difficult for them to win games. But if they could play them, it would be better for everybody.
Yeah, that is Kenny Dalglish there. Just to let you know that all this weekend, Virgin Media Sport customers are in for a real treat as they can enjoy a collection of the best Champions League comebacks ever. These include Manchester United's famous late winner in Barcelona and Steven Gerrard's belter against Olympiacos and many, many more besides. And even more of a treat, Richie, I've no mm -hmm. doubt you'll be tuned in. OTB's Classic Game Club is making its debut on Virgin Media Sport this Saturday from 6 o'clock. Myself, Jer and Owen are going to be talking about Manchester United's semi-final comeback against Juventus from 1999. We're going to give it the Classic Game Club treatment ahead of Virgin Media Sport showing highlights from the game at 7. I watched this back the other night. Dear God, it's one of the best games of football I have ever seen. I, I'm love one of the upshots of all this is like getting to see brilliant games again that you actually had forgotten how good they were. BBC have been showing World Cup highlights recently, and obviously FIFA I think showed the full things on the YouTube channel. Getting to watch uh, Brazil and France from 1986 was just an absolute joy over the past couple of weeks. There've been so many good games, but yeah, like getting to revisit uh, Roy Keane's uh, superb salvo in Turin uh, is uh, definitely something worth revisiting. And also watching these things in the peace of knowing there's nothing really else to do. I know, Usually yeah. if you were sitting down watching a game from 1986, you'd be thinking, you know, probably should be progressing with my career or my education or spending time with my family. But I've done all that other stuff in the 18 hours of the day. Now I can just sit and relax and watch this. It's perfect. Yeah, as, as well you know, Nathan, I left hopes of uh, progress in my career behind a long time ago. So uh, I'm happy enough to watch well, this. Well, well, Richie, we have uh, first text <laughs> in. That is a brilliant Colin Murray. See? Told you. Sitting down next to Jimmy White, ready to watch. Well, well like, the tell Masters my Colin Murray story again. Richie would, Richie would appreciate my Colin Murray story. Oh, so God. Richie, I don't think we've talked about this. I think we're this, do we? 2001, 2002. I'm at right. a, I'm at Witness slash Oxygen, working, working, working. Oh, you weren't on stage, were working. You? Not that. Not this was a couple of years after my uh, appearance with the Happy Mondays, and I was technically working for a local radio station now uh, for Golub FM. Uh, I say working, you know, I got a press pass. I just enjoyed the weekend. But I somehow managed to get into with Dave Grohl, which was uh, quite a big thing back then. Wow. So I'm, I'd, say I'm, I'd say I'm 40 seconds into my interview with world's nicest man, Dave Grohl, and who literally just interrupts us, but Colin Murray, and says, sorry, got to take him for an interview on the BBC. You got, you got, you what got. Would Colin Mur what, what do you think Colin Murray said? Excuse me, Dave, BBC, got to interrupt you, take you over here. Good lad. Sorry there. Where are you from? Go away. Oh, bless. Matthew McConnell says, as an ardent snooker fan, I thought that was a very serviceable Colin Murray impression. Serviceable, I will take. What about Joey Dunlop? Oh, my God. And you see, uh, if they love see, it Joey, down. That, that's the thing. Joey would be a remarkable, mm. um, po remarkably popular figure uh, up and down, um, given his longevity when he was uh, still racing, bless him, still alive. So, so I look here and it says, Joey Dunlop's from Armoy in County Antrim. We're talking about down, not Antrum. I don't Again, know, to, this, that, boundaries in the north. Maybe we should have stuck with the 26 counties because I feel there's going to be a lot of hassle with these. Glad you said that. Not Already, me. it's starting. We haven't got a definitive answer. Have we got any real expertise on whether George Best is Antrim or down? I think this is going to roll on to OTBM tomorrow morning and we're going to have to leave it to Owen and Adrian to somehow sort out. Yeah, we've got time for time for because George, uh, John Giles is George Best. John Giles is John Giles. waiting patiently. Okay, uh, um, go on. Speaking, I guess. Story. Speaking, I guess of unity across the island. Derry City have given their backing to the latest All Island League proposal. Dutch company Hypercube had presented a model for a split season with an end of season knockout phase to crown the quote unquote king of the island. Derry say the pandemic has exposed the underlying fragility of the present model. Meanwhile, the Heineken Champions Cup is going to be set for a radical overhaul next season. The EPCR say they are considering expanding the competition from 20 to 24 teams for one season only. Meanwhile, they remain committed to completing this season's Champions Cup. It's halted at the quarterfinal stage and they hope to play the final in mid-October. All right, I think we're done, Richie. Thank you for that. And thank you again Thanks, for the Nathan. Murray impression. The real thing, the real thing, the real deal will be on OTB AM tomorrow morning. Somehow trying to pick that down OTB Mount Rushmore. John Giles is up next. I was so pleased to just be there and be playing at Augusta. Everybody understand. There is silence. Heart stop. Heart stop beating. It's rolling and into the hole. Homer has birdied the 17th and 18th.